What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode we're going to be going over the intro and basics for Rider and a lot of the JetBrains applications, as a lot of them are very similar and you can transfer your settings and preferences between them. So recently I created an episode on setting up Visual Studio and the basics of Visual Studio, as this is something we've been using in the series and in my personal life and for work I use Visual Studio all the time and it is fantastic. However, Rider is a wonderful alternative. Some instances I like it more than Visual Studio and some instances I like Visual Studio more than Rider or the other JetBrains tools. So I wanted to make an episode on both because there was enough interest and I am trying to make sure that everyone is able to program the way that they want to. Because if you enjoy it and you feel comfortable in it, you are going to produce better code. So with that said, here we are. We're gonna be setting up Rider from scratch. So I'm going to download it, install it, go over some of the settings that I usually choose, as well as some of my preferences, and we'll make sure that we can open up a project. So from start to finish, just like the Visual Studio episode. Just some backstory, Rider is the JetBrains tool for Unreal Engine. You can technically use it for a few other things, but really it was created with Unreal Engine in mind. It's very useful because it allows you to do a lot of things within the IDE without going into Unreal Engine. So you can create classes and look at some of the details that you would typically only see within Unreal Engine Windows. It's also very good at debugging Unreal Engine and using IntelliSense that is cooperative with Unreal Engine. Because regular C++ programming is not the same as Unreal Engine. They are very similar. Unreal is using C++, but of course C++ has a lot of its own methods for things. Additionally, if you use other JetBrains tools like PyCharm or CLion, then you can integrate them together and share your preferences and settings just like I was mentioning earlier. So the first thing we want to do to install Rider is go to this link right here. I will also put it in the description, but this is the official link for the JetBrains Rider download page. And you're going to go here, you'll see your introduction, and there's a big download button. It's pretty much that simple. You're just going to click download. For this next page, you have to determine your operating system. And so the options available are Windows, Mac, OS, and Linux. So yes, Rider is also better for other platforms. Visual Studio doesn't really work on Linux at the time of making this. You can use Visual Studio Code instead if you want, but Rider will work on both Windows and Linux and Mac as well, so it's actually friendlier for Mac too. So for us, we're on Windows, so I can just hit download, but otherwise you would just click your operating system and go to the appropriate packaging type. I'm going to keep it as an EXE, but you could also download it as a zip file and extract it. Either way works. So download, and as it's downloading here, in a couple seconds it should start downloading. Once it's done downloading, we can run the EXE that we got. So you can see here that it has finished downloading. We can go to our file explorer and go to the downloads folder. And from here, we can double click our executable or run it. And at this point, we are ready to set up Rider. So we have our little welcome page here and we can click next and you choose where you want to install it to. For me, I will actually change it to my D drive and install it here. So D slash programming slash JetBrains Rider 2025 1.2. But regardless, whenever you've selected this, you can go ahead and hit next and you get your installation options. You can choose to get a shortcut on your desktop to be able to open it. I'm not going to click that one, but feel free if you want. You can add a path variable. This allows you to access it from command line more easily and same with on Linux. Add writer executables to Microsoft Defender exclusions is probably a good one to keep checked. That way you're not getting blocked due to security reasons from Microsoft Defender. And create associations, these are different project types that Rider is going to understand. And so you can create associations for something like a solution file. So it means solution files will now open in Rider. I'm actually going to leave this unchecked for me because I do typically do my programming at home in Visual Studio, but feel free to check it if you want to use Rider as your default. It may look like you don't want this installed JetBrains ETW host service, but this is really good for debugging which is something that we definitely want, so I recommend keeping it. I'll probably check the add open folders project option too, because that is something sometimes you like to do. You may not want to open a specific solution file or project, but instead an entire folder as the project. So we might as well have the option to do that. When we click next, we get to choose where in the start menu that we want these shortcuts to go. The default of JetBrains is perfectly fine, so I'm going to click Install, and it is going to go through this process. Okay. 
and at this point the setup is complete so it has been installed so we can click finish and I am going to leave it checked so that we can launch JetBrains Rider. So Rider is starting up same as Visual Studio we have a little splash screen here you will have to accept the agreement I'm going to check it but feel free to read it for data sharing it is your choice if you want to share your data and statistics with JetBrains you can click send if you want or if you're like me you can click don't send on everything and at this point we have a few options you have your free non-commercial use which is for independent developers such as myself you have a free 30-day trials for a business license and then you have the activate license page here as well so it is entirely up to you depends on the needs that you have but for me i'm going free non-commercial use as it says, it is free for learning and self-education, content creation, and open source and hobby development, which we fall under. At this point, we could log in. Now, I do have an account I can use, but I'm not going to use that one for my personal projects, so I'm going to register instead. At this point, we go to our account page. We can log in with whatever we want. Of course, I'm not going to show you my login, so feel free to continue with email or GitLab or whatever the case may be. So in total, you will have to enter your email. You will have to go to that email and confirm it with a code. You will enter your first and last name and your password. Once you do that and confirm, you will be able to go to this page here. Basically, this is just confirming if you wanna be on the newsletter or not. You can accept or decline. I actually am already on it on my other account, so I'm going to decline. At this point, you could buy licenses or look at your free licenses if you needed them but I actually don't have to do anything else in here. I can close out of this and I can go back to Rider and I can go log in for non-commercial use. Then you'll be forced to log in with the same information you just registered with. And once you do that, you will come to this page here saying authorization successful and you can close this page. Now at this point, you can go back to Rider and you will see this pop up right here. So basically it's saying we can use this license, but we need to agree to the terms. So check this box, make sure you actually agree to them and then start non-commercial use. You actually have the ability to import your settings from Visual Studio, which is awesome. And I highly recommend, if you're someone like me who has used a lot of Visual Studio. If you haven't, you can go ahead and skip import or go to other options. But these other options are mainly just for configuration and installation directory. We already went through. If you click on it, it's just going to bring you back to this folder where it is installed. But if you do want to import from Visual Studio, you just click the drop down and select the version. We can go ahead and import from 2022. That's perfectly fine. And some of the absolutely brilliant things that it has picked up on is the theme and we want our UI theme dark. If you didn't want that in Rider, you could uncheck it. We also have our key map. So the key mapping, such as our shortcuts and things, will be the same as Visual Studio for 2022. You can show the ones that have been copied, but I do use these, so might as well keep them in here. In recent projects, it will actually go and find the projects in your solution files associated with them and any other different types of project files. We can go next because we want to include all of these. And now it's going to ask you which plugins you want. I actually am not going to select any right now, but feel free to go through and select them if you want. I'm good, so I'm going to press finish. It's going to import the settings. So at this point you're good and you can go ahead and open up any projects in here that you want. You see it found all my solution files like we saw it said it would on the previous page. So feel free to click one if you want. I can go to my fighter template and open it in here. You do have to select trust and open if you actually want to open this project. I know this is my project and it is safe to do so so I can trust it. Now finally, we are within Rider. That's how you can install and set up Rider for your programming projects and on your personal computer. It will work for businesses and companies as well. Just make sure that you actually have the proper license and proper settings. Otherwise, you will be good to go. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope it helped you set up your solution. Codebase in Rider. There's a lot more we can do, but just like the Visual Studio episode, I just wanted a very basic introductory episode from downloading Rider to getting a project open. So I hope this helped, and if it did, please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do, and I really appreciate it. If you want to support the channel further, or are interested in what else we have on this channel, please feel free to check out the Patreon, YouTube membership, or Discord subscriptions to show that love and support and get some benefits along the way. If you ran into any problems setting up Rider or any of the JetBrains tools, 
or environments, feel free to join the Discord community. There is a link in the description, and I would be happy to help you with any problems there. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.